A few of the patterns in 50 Yards of Fun have noses like this guy's. You can see on this guy the stitches work seamlessly in a different direction than the rest of the body, but are all one piece. You can see the ears and tail are sewn on later, which has a different look than the nose. To do this seamless join, we are going to hold stitches on waist yarn and come back to them later, then removing the waist yarn to expose live stitches. You can see I have worked up to where I am ready to add in the nose. I will start by working as many stitches before the waist yarn stitches as the pattern calls for. In this example, I will do four. Then I'm going to grab my waist yarn, join it in, and begin to knit the next stitches with it. Make sure your waist yarn is a different color than your working yarn and about the same weight or even slightly heavier than your working yarn. I like to keep my tail in front like I did here because I think it makes it easier to remove the waist yarn once I am done. Now I will just knit the next stitches as if I hadn't even switched yarn. Your pattern will tell you how many to knit, but I'm going to do eight for this example. Again, I'm leaving the tail in front here. Once your stitches have been knit, slip all of the waist yarn stitches back to your left hand needle purlwise. Slipping them purlwise will ensure they don't get twisted as you go. Then, pretend you didn't even knit with the waist yarn at all, go back to your working yarn, and knit to the end of that needle, and then to the end of the round. In sock knitting, this is referred to as an afterthought heel. In toy knitting, I like to call it an afterthought nose. This is another one of those cool techniques that looks way trickier than it is. You can see your waist yarn is in. I'm just tightening up my stitches. And next we will take this waist yarn out and add a nose. Your piece will look something like this when you are done. At this point, we're going to remove the waist yarn, exposing these live stitches along the bottom, as well as another set of live stitches along the top here. How I remove the waist yarn is to place the stitches onto my needles before removing the waist yarn, which will make sure you don't drop or lose any stitches. I will just simply place my needle through each loop that is connected to the waist yarn on the bottom. I don't worry about it if I'm twisting the stitches at this point. I can fix that later as I come to it. I double check I have the right number, eight in this case, then I flip around to the top and do the same thing. You will most likely have an extra stitch from doing this, although sometimes I don't, but if you do, just add it to the needles as you go. We're going to pick up extra stitches in the first round anyway, so think of it as a head start. Slip through the stitches. It is helpful to aim for the same leg of the stitch every time. Check how many you have. I ended up with nine instead of eight here, like I said. Then, to get the waist yarn out, I go ahead and just put the point of my needle under the yarn. And then, I just pick out each stitch. You can cut it out too, but I never like introducing scissors into my knitting. If you want to be really tricky, you could use a slicker yarn as your waist yarn, like a silk or a bamboo, or even a tencel to make the waist yarn removal easier but I really don't find it hard to get out of there. There we go. You can see the waist yarn is gone and now I have just two sets of live stitches left, one above and one below, ready to go on and knit a nose. You can see there is an actual hole in my knitting now I will show you how to knit the first round of the nose, picking up stitches here and here as you go. Picking up stitches will help close up the gap. So, get ready to knit, join in your new yarn, and knit across the bottom needle. In afterthought heel sock knitting, I always find you pick up one stitch as you start the row, and one at the end, but here we will pick up just one stitch at the end of the line of stitches. Once you get to the other side, you're going to pick up the stitch. To do this, I'm going to simply slip my needle through one of the stitches between my top and bottom sets of live stitches. You could knit the stitch like usual, like I'm showing you, but I like to knit through the back loop to twist the stitch. I find this helps close up any gaps that picking up a stitch can sometimes create, although it didn't do much here. 
Either way, you can do a little stitching up with a tapestry needle at the end if you want. So now we flip to the top needle with the top stitches and do the same thing again. If your stitches are twisted on the needle like mine here, you can just knit through the back loop to fix it. Or, if you prefer, you can take them off the needle and turn them around as you come to them. Either works. Just do watch that you are not twisting your stitches in the first round here. Since I have an extra stitch here at the end, I'm going to close up this gap by picking up another stitch from between the two lines of stitches and knitting it together with the extra stitch. That will leave me with the nine stitches I'm looking for here. So there you go, the start of afterthought nose. From here I will just continue to work the nose as the pattern calls for.